It's good to get here again and to be at the Palmer College and uh, meet you and talk with you individually and hear some of the things you, uh, questions you have and, and the very same questions that I had. But I tell you what we have to do is we have to sort of find ourselves. We have to sort of position ourselves. We have to sort of understand. And the only way we're going to do that is we're going to have to get us a book of instructions. It's just like anything else. We go buy a boat, we go buy a house, a car, airplane, whatever. The first thing I want to know is the instructions. Now you spent some time here, you spent some hours, you spent heartaches, you've cried, thought about leaving, uh, throwing in the towel, stopping, don't know which you go, this guy says do this, this guy says do this, uh, but oh so and so, uh, Dr. Blue, I mean he said this works, he said uh, uh, do this way, and I'll tell you what I want to know, I want to know what the Father said. I want to know what Dr. B.J. Palmer said. And I'm not interested in what Dr. Blue said or Dr. Orange or Dr. Purple or uh, this type of thing. I want to know what the man said. It's just like when I read the other black book. I mean, there's some good stories in there and I like to read them, but I tell you what I'm very interested in is what's written in red. I want to know what the man said. I want to know what he had to say. What was his observations? What was his conclusions? What was his instructions? And then when I find that, then I get excited because I say, now I can't go wrong now because I'm reading what the man said. When I look in here and I see what the man said, he said uh, one group uh, uh, convinced that chiropractic is an all-complete, all-sufficient philosophy. This is page 18. Science and art needing no substitutes or additions to its elements. That's us. That's one group. Uh-oh. The other group believes that additional subjects, allopathic medicine and principal practice, help a chiropractor rent a more all-around practice building a value. You realize he wrote this 50 years ago. Fifty years ago it reads just like it was written yesterday just off the press and I'm just now introducing it to you for the first time. Where is Dr. Blue? Where is uh, Dr. Orange? Where is Dr. Purple? Uh, where is his book? I mean he's had 50 years uh, to write it. Where is it? I want to see it. I want to read it. It's not available. I can't find it. It's not there. And yet to hear him tell it, this is it. This is it. This is it. I had a friend of mine who graduated in college. He said they called him now the well, he is a seminar king. That's his name. It's taken him 22 years now to go to every seminar there is. And he's been to every one of them. He's now the seminar king. And he lives up here in, uh, uh, outside of Chicago. And uh, uh, he said, I'm still confused. I'm still trying to get going uh, in my practice uh, to find which way to go because he's listened to so much garbage. Well, you'll hear some garbage at this school probably. And uh, I'm, for, I'm, I'm excited about it because you know what I mean? Uh, hey, I'm not a seminarist. I mean, I practice over the tables every day in my clinics and see sick people get well. So uh, this is not no living to me, uh, putting on seminars and speaking and stuff like that. And I say sometimes I'm surprised that the college even has me back from time to time. Uh, because I say we have some no nothing instructors teaching nothing. And uh, if I say that and that hits you, I'm sorry. I was out in California speaking here a couple of weeks ago, and we had four instructors from the Palmer College West uh, in our uh, audience there. And I said the same thing. We have some know-nothing instructors teaching nothing. Well, two of them didn't show up for the afternoon session. And uh, they didn't like that. Uh, didn't like me pointing that out or saying that. We're supposed to say what you want to hear, what you're happy with, what makes you happy. You know what makes you happy? All techniques work. All roads lead to God. Uh, you better check that one out. Uh, I'm telling you, you better check that one out. If you think that uh, all techniques work and you can just hit somebody with a shovel in the rear and they're going to get well, B.J. was illustrating a simple principle for a one-time illustration that our principle is so great that it is possible that you could get more sick people well than that other profession. I don't want to you know, give them too much, so I just said other profession. Uh, by just hitting somebody in the, in the, in the uh, uh, rear with a snow shovel. You'd probably get more well than they would. That was what he was saying. He wasn't saying that's a technique. That you can just set up some hit people in the rear with a shovel. My God, what does it take to educated people to understand that and cut through that? I mean, it's like being plastered. When it starts to get hard, we got to break through that like an M&M. &M. Come on out. You see what I mean? Get free! So we can understand what this book is saying. That's why BJ said you have to read this book three times. And I read it three times and I still didn't understand it. 
So I said, it's going to be a little rougher for me. And BJ said, I have no way of knowing what you don't know until you know it. Then you must make contrast between what you thought you knew, but now know that you did not know it then because you know it now. Now that's one paragraph. And you, I just challenge you to read this book about four pages. Close it and give me your synopsis of what he said. Uh -huh, no, you're not going to be able to do that. It's going, hey, you've got to read it more than three or four times. So I think he said this. I'm not quite sure that he said this. I said, well, let me tell you what he did say. You know, I like to do this because you need to get you one of these books. Oh, what a glorious day that would be if I could look out over this audience and see nothing but the back of black books, BJ books, every hand looking like it was there in Romania. These people have been under communist rule. They've broken free. And I was there with a church group. We gave out 36 thousand pamphlets for Jesus Christ uh, while we were there. I mean personally handed it to 36,000 people and they were glad to get it because they've never heard that word. They've never heard it and it, we had it printed in Romania uh, so they could read it and understand it. But you know what chiropractors, we think you can just buy success. Well I'll get me a manager. I'll get me a management group. I'll be a, get me a consultoid. And you know what a consultant is, don't you? Uh, well, first you got to be a chiropractor, and then you become a chiropractoid, and then you become a consultant, uh, then you become a consultoid, you see. And uh, I was talking to one the other week. He was a good friend of mine. He graduated right here. I said, what do you teach people? He said, we well, say, uh, good morning. This is the Kell Clinic. I said, what? I said, yeah, we teach them to pull up, pick up the phone and say, good morning, this is the Kale Clinic. May I help you? I said, my God, we're lost. We're finished. We're through. We're over. When I graduated, Paul B.J. never had a manager. Uh, when he died, he left $60 million. This college, enterprises, radio stations. B.J., there's nothing to TV. There's nothing to radio. It'll never work. There's nothing to the NCM. It won't work. It won't stand the test of time. It is. It just is. It just is. It just is. Yeah, BJ said, I love it, to read it right to you out of the book. That's what my point was. If I could just say page 4, page 10, and you could just read it right along with me, wouldn't that be exciting? Uh, page 210, there are several systems of how to adjust, peddled about the country today, based upon the idea of a series of tappings, of jarrings, or of long pressure upon vertebrae. Notably, the three times wrapping upon each vertebra, up and down, one side down, the other percussion hammer me method is directly in point. It can be made to stimulate or inhibit heart action by vibrating tapping. The worst of all these methods is that they do get sometimes temporarily changes in remote functions they construe to be health return. Well, BJ said, there's two types of results. Simulated, temporary. Simulated, it simulates temporary results. And then you have permanent corrective. And that's what this is all about. Permanent, corrective, over, through, finished, absolute, boom. As I walked there in Jerusalem, and there was another man before me, and he walked in white, and he was a teacher, and people wanted to hear what he had to say. And he was these 10 lepers, and they approached him, and he uh, cleansed them all. And I tell you what, now they may have got run over by a, 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 a camel or something like that. Uh, but they never had leprosy again because the man I'm talking about don't have to do things two or three times. I mean, he did it once. He said, you're, you're clear and you're free. You'll never have that again as long as you exist in this universe. People, that's what we're talking about here. This, I'm not talking about no spiritual thing or no religious thing. I'm talking about a universal principle that's here that allows the pages of this book just to exist and the floor you're, and the chair you're sitting in, just the molecular structure to hold you. That's the, what we're talking about, that you have command of. And yet we play with toys in the backyards of chiropractic. You want to see some of them? I don't care if they don't bite back no more. I'm, I'm glad to get this on the video. There it is, Palmer College. Uh, there's a toy. Surely, to God, you don't have one of those in your office. Three of new products. Oh, now these are real good because they prove they stimulate patient referral. I mean, if you'll use these, you'll get a lot of patient referrals. Isn't that marvelous? 
Oh, now that's a pretty one there. I like that, whatever it is. It's a 4,000 or something. That's a nice one. I mean, that's beautiful. Look at this one back here. Oh, I don't know what that is either, but it sure is pretty. Uh, oh, this is wonderful stuff here. One good thing leads to another. Are we, are we going crazy or what? <laughs> Tylenol, for, for chiropractors, chirofen, as the name applies, will be sold exclusively to the chiropractor for dispensing to their patients and will not be available at drugstores. Isn't that going to be amazing? We'll have our own thing going. You see how stupid that is? Then we take a man like this. So far, there has not been discovered any effective chemotherapeutic substance which is devoid of potential toxicity. Perhaps uh, no drug administered only a person is entirely without some hazard. Well, who are you to say that? I mean, uh, I mean, really. Uh, former president of the American Association of Pathologists and Bacteriologists of the Mayo Clinic. I mean, if you don't know something about drugs, let's ask the man that knows something about it. There's a the man. Then we have Oh man, I'm telling you, is this wild or what? Preparatory drug license, chiropractic, preparatory drug license, he's proud of it, he put it right there in his yellow pages in the Florida phone book. <whistles> preparatory drug license, of course I knew he'd need it because he's a chiropractic orthopedist anyway, he'd need that preparatory drug license. <laughs> you see, he'd have to have that, he'd need that. Acupuncture, nutrition. What about chiropractic? Well, here's another one. I like this too. When a patient is referred to me, I do something that other pay physicians on the case overlook. I take the patient off all medication. BJ took him off medication, but you see, he was he was too far out. I mean, he was crazy, a crazy old man, BJ. Yeah, I took him off all medication, took the worst of the worst cases right here on this camp, the chief of staff of the Mayo Clinic. First thing I do when a person comes here and they're sick, nobody can get them well, I take them off all medication. I mean, he knows you can't get well taking medication, so you gotta get off of it. So he takes them all off of it. Who is this? Chief of staff of the Mayo Clinic. And yet we come along somehow or another in this stupid, crazy, idiotic, subversive attitude. I want to be just like them. <laughs> I said, oh Lord, if I could just wear a white, one of them white jackets and they could put me on the staff for the local hospital. Oh my, that'd be the epitome of my professional career. So I think they're gonna let me have a, a picture with him tomorrow. And they're gonna, he called me doctor. See how stupid that is. I mean, what do we want that for? We have more now than we can ever hope to know or, or do or, or even serve. It's what BJ left us. I know because I've been doing it for 28 years and I can't get it all done. First said, well, Kel, you practice up cervical. So I practice up cervical too, you know, about 25% of the time, maybe 50%. Well, that means you don't practice it at all because you can't practice this 25, 50%. It takes 110% every time you have to practice it all the time. All the time, every day, practice it. Well, like a friend of mine, he went to California, they said, Doc, we'd like for you to sit up here, but there are no upper cervical patients in Antioch, California. <laughs> there are just no upper cervical patients. Isn't that amazing? I'm in a town with 70 chiropractors. We're the only patient, uh, clinic that practices up cervical specific. Uh, so I thought we had a need there, so I built another clinic in the same town. Uh, so now we have two clinics, one on the north side, one on the west side, practicing up cervical specific chiropractic. We may have to go over to the east side and build one, because people over there need up cervical specific too. What are we saying? Hey, you're here, you're frustrated, you hear all this junk, this talk, uh, doctor this, doctor that, trying to get you to do this and that. Medicine's rapidly deteriorating the medicine of yesterday. Modern medicine today is short on what is long, long ago. Differences, the new principle practice upon which our medicine is building, a medicine tomorrow is chiropractic. They want what you got, because they know what they got don't work. 
And that's sad because you've got it and you don't know it works. Now, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just talking in general chiropractic. Maybe I'm not talking to anybody here in this, in this room. I'm talking general chiropractic. It appears as we go down the chiropractic scene, there are those who are lacking in understanding this great principle that we have. And I know there, that they are because when I was down in Florida, Dr. Sigafoos will be talking to you next. He'll tell you some things he's seen. He'll turn his stomach. He's from Florida. Dr. Sigafoos, I, I, I want you to get this stopped down in Florida, if you would, please, sir. <laughs> Here's a chiropractic acupuncturist office. I took a picture of his office, see? Chiropractic acupuncture. What is that? Well, this guy here said, I'm going to go a little further than that, Dr. Siggy. This is also in Florida, for all you Florida chiropractors. Uh, medical chiropractor. Right out on a billboard, medical chiropractor. Do we think that medical is going to draw something in, or, or it's going to make us famous, or it's going to make us some kind of a, what is that that we've got about that? What is that? I wish we could talk to the medical profession. And all the chiropractors that want a medical degree, for God's sakes, give it to them and let them do it. You see, and that's so we can get on with this wonderful thing that we have from above, down, inside, out, and the bigness of the fellow within. Now, you're going to wonder what that is. You know, it's like anything. <clears throat> you're looking for the truth. You're looking for the truth. Well, if you keep searching, you'll find it. And you'll come in contact with those people who have found it and would like to share it with you. Now, once you get this, there's nowhere else to go because this is it. This is it. You'll then see, it's sort of like, you know, when they split the atom, they thought they would never split the atom. And then when they did, they found there were whole galaxies down there in that atom. It was infinity. The smaller they got, the bigger it was. And they began to find and see things they'd never seen before. They thought the atom was the smallest particle. Then they split the atom and they said, no, there's something more, and there's something more. And we fell into open space and these galaxies down there. So as it is when you get this, when you understand this, and how great it is, and you begin to concentrate and get a hold of it, and you'll find out how wonderful it is and how great it is, and how that you just walk this and talk it and realize that this is, this is. You're talking about something that's just beyond belief. This is law. This is law. This ain't something you can just uh, yesterday and no tomorrow and stuff like that. No, uh-uh. See what it says right here. Oh, I love this one. See, that's what we got to start doing. And we have a network of doctors, of over 300 doctors certified to do this work. And we want, we have them to bring their book because we want to study out of the book. I don't want you to hear what Michael Kale has to say. I don't have anything to say to you that you can't find right here in this book. Page 144, a successful chiropractor is not a successful diagnostician. And we cannot visualize a successful diagnostician ever being a successful chiropractor. What does it gain a chiropractor if he diagnoses a disease correctly according to orthodox medicine and he cannot give an adjustment of a vertebral subluxation letting innate get the sick well? Page 1508. The single most important chiropractic item to recovery of health is the adjustment. It is the single weakest link in our professional ability. What? BJ, did you say 50 years ago you knew this day was going to come? That we'd be uh, floating out here on the edges trying to grab this and grab that? And now we have it, the day of the carnival. The day of the carnival is here. We're going through that now in chiropractic. I hope we come through it successfully and victoriously. Oh, yes, get it right here. Uh, a million dollar a, a year practice. Get it now. The fat lady's fixing to swallow the snake. Step right in. Get your ticket real quick. Here now, she's fixing the show's fixing to start. Oh, yes, get you a, get you a uh, consultoid. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This technique, it works. A thousand patients, new patients a month. Just call this number. We'll have them for you. You see how crazy that is? How crazy that is? I mean, all this is is just a little work. You can't buy this. You can't buy this. You can plant $100 bills in a garden and want a thing come up. And you can water them every day, those $100 bills, want a thing come up. But you can get 15 cents worth of seed and plant it and feed a neighborhood. 
You see, you've got to work the principle. Money can't buy this. You have to understand it. You have to let it absorb in. You have to get it. You have to get that crust off. You have to look, get the light in, get rid of the darkness, and the light will come right in. And when you get that all understanding of what B.J., the man, wrote 50 years ago and yet today, it reads like it was written yesterday. But not only this, but he wrote 40 of 39 more volumes just like it, the likes of which have never been reproduced in our, in our profession. So he stunned, this man did, as he walked here on this dirt. That's why I'll have to be here, because I wonder, did one day, did B.J. walk right along this area here? Hey, is that crazy to you? Yeah, it might be. Well, maybe one of us is crazy. Uh, when I went down to last September, and I always wanted to do this, two things, I wanted to see the pyramids and, uh, and, and just get that. And I'll tell you a little bit about that sometime. But I was down in September, and I wanted to go down there and sleep in the bed that B.J. died in in his Sarasota home. So I went down there to the, to the mansion and uh, come to find out they didn't know which bed he died in. And there was two in there, so I had to stay two days. Uh, <laughs> so I slept in one one night and I slept in the other night to make sure I got into one that he died in. Because I want to pick up those vibes. It's kind of crazy. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. What you want to get to is to the point where it's not crazy anymore. And you begin to search deep in and find out, what is this man talking? Was he making a joke? Was he doing, making funnies or what? Well, let's see. I know he had the Bible out. I know he, he said something from the Bible. Mm, I just can't remember what the topic of his sermon was. So you sat there 45 minutes to an hour and listened to that man, and you never heard one word that he said. You listened, but you never heard. And that's what we need to do in chiropractic today. Not only do we need to listen, but we need to hear what's being said. And if it's different, that's why you gotta have a book. Cause when Dr. Uh, Purple or instructor or doctor or whoever or consultant or friend or neighbor or, or field chiropractor, if he crosses with this word, wait a minute, Dr. B.J. said, well, I know, but uh, B.J. was wrong on this point. Well, here's what I've instructed all of our doctors to do, our 300 doctors that I told you are certified, and you'll see me do it if, if you ever tell me that. Well, you know, uh, Dr. Kale, Dr. Palmer uh, was wrong on this one case. I said, pardon me just a second. And I leave, and he thinks I'm coming back, <laughs> you see. But I never return, you see. Because uh, as soon as you tell me that Dr. B.J. Palmer was wrong, or he uh, misunderstood, or he didn't quite understand, I said, pardon me just a second. And I leave and I don't come back, because I don't want to hear that, you see. When you've done and accomplished and seen and been and done all the things that he's done, then you can talk to me about what Dr. Palmer did know or did not know. But you know what you'll do when you get to that point? You'll see the things he's seen. Because this road of the universe is the same. It has the same stop signs on it. You go down the road and it'll say, turn left. You down the road, say, turn right. Turn left. It's not like up and down. It's absolute for always, ever, the same, exact. You'll see some of the same road signs that I've seen. I've seen some of the same ones that BJ seen. Not all of them. No, sir. I don't claim that. No, sir. Uh-uh. When you can get up in a single thought in the middle of the night and take a typewriter and type a single space 120 feet long, on one thought, and then lay it down and get up in the morning and read it and say, wow, wow, man, where this, this, that's exactly what I thought. Where'd this come from? Where do you think he got 40 volumes from? Just doing that. He was capable of communicating with the innate because the innate had chosen him. He was destined like Einstein, uh, like Thomas Edison. B.J. was destined. What a privilege it is for you to be here at this Palmer campus, the Vatican of chiropractic. You're at the Vatican where it started, right here. Don't stumble. Don't miss. Don't miss what you came for. I beg you. I'll plead with you. I'll get down on my knees and I'll beg you. I'm not proud for what it's done for me, for what it's done for my children, for what it's done for my grandchildren. My little grandson, born eight weeks premature, pulled him out, cesarean section, yet the other two was born natural childbirth, had an emergency there, 
first aid. Get in your mind what's first aid and what's health care. Make those decisions before the time comes that you've got to make them. Get that defined. We're not in the first aid business. Attaching arms that's been torn off and blown off with hand grenades, that's not our job. That's first aid. We're in the health business. Now, once the arm is reattached, that's when we take up. Because if we don't, it may not stay reattached. You see? That's our job. As soon as the mechanic attaches it, and thank God that we got those people who know how to do it, I'm glad. But they can't make it stay sewed on. You and I have that job. That's ours. So let's know that. So they took the baby out. When the first two hours, his lungs collapsed, both of them. Put him on the breathing machine. He's all hooked up. He was that long. He was five hours old. I talked to the neonatologist, whatever they are. I don't try to pride myself on remembering what they, those names are, you know, orthopedics. And, uh, I don't want that to get in my vocabulary, you see. Um, so I talked to him and I said, Doctor, we're going to have to adjust my grandson or he's going to die. He said, I think you're right. He said, what do you want to do? I said, we're going to need to take a temperature differential and we need to scan him and look at those x-rays and I need to adjust him. He said, well, we can't take him off the instruments. I can adjust him right on the instruments. I said, I've adjusted many patients in a coma and they come too. Well, I guess if they believe in you, they'll, it's all right, chiropractic people believe in it. Why well, do people in a coma didn't believe in me? They didn't even know who I was or what I was or I was even there. So we did this. We applied this principle from above down, inside out. I said, BJ, we got to do it. I understand I don't worship this man, BJ. I respect him. I only worship one man, and it's not BJ Palmer. I love him. I read that principle. Told the MD to hold the chirometer, single probe instrument. We took the temperature differential. Dr. Lake knows the instrument very well. Many of you here may also know it. The chirometer, single probe, temperature differential. We took it, and he has a half point high. He was supine, hooked up to all the instruments. And I looked at the x-rays with the lungs and claps, got the listing, took my finger right through the little uh, plastic compartment there, and said, the doctor looked, and I said, well, wait eight minutes. We'll check it again. We did, the temperature was balanced. I said, I'm expecting all your instruments to start changing. Well, I did expect that. Why is that? Because BJ said, this thing works. He said, it works. So if it works, and that's instructions, and this is the book, I expected to do it. If you turn that valve, it'll say it'll fill right up with water. That's what I expected to do. Isn't that what you expected to do? Yeah, exactly like the instructions. You turn it, it fills right up. So in two hours, one lung reinflated. They were amazed. They thought it was some kind of an unusual occurrence. Because you know what they usually do? They put you on the breathing machine uh, just to sort of temper you just a little bit and get you used to, die, to dying. See, they know death is coming. It's just a matter of a day, two, two weeks, three weeks. They say, look, he's not breathing on his own. We need to cut the instrument off. Sorry, let's have a word of prayer and go into the chapel. And it's all over, you see. So the next afternoon, we had adjusted him four times during that whole sequence. The other lung reinflated. And that Friday, we took him home. He's now almost five, and he's doing just fine. Last time I seen my little grandson, he was doing just fine. So what happened? BJ, thank you on this place, on this space, on this dirt, right here at this building. I found out that principle that allowed my grandson to live. Hey, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about it allowing me to live for some 29 years now. No shots, no pills, no syrups, no nothing. I don't, if this don't work, don't wake me up. Just let me live on, see? Just let me keep on cruising on through life because I know this don't work. It can't be right that you can just uh, live a principle and you can just stay well and 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 well, 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 well. But you know what? You don't have to believe it. And that's the wonderful thing. In fact, you can disbelieve it. It works anyway. I tell my patients, when this line gets straight, you're going to get well, or this whole thing's a joke. And we got a graph, it just comes out on the graph, and I show it to the patient, put a date on it, show it to myself. Now there's, there's your problem, that's the cause of it right there. I go into the examination, I come out, I say, X ray, I said, Betty, I found your problem. It's like, God, everybody thought this was in my head, and I was crazy. I'm something, Dr. Kill. 
And I said, we are going to be able to help you. It's going to take a little time, but when we get this line straight, you're going to get better. This whole thing's a joke. And I've been doing this for some 29 years. We get the line straight, and guess what? They get better. And that's amazing. And I'm excited about it. And I know this. The reason is because it is a law. Because to know innate is to know the producer of man. His every organ, every function, his health, his sickness, his restoration of health, his thoughts, ambitions, his everything. To know it is to understand the simple single cause of everything human. Everything human. It'll change your thoughts. It'll change your learning capacity. You can get checked and get clear and you'll be able to remember things and be able to quote them, be able to pass exams, be able to see things you had not seen before because you've entered into areas that were not possible. You couldn't get in through the lock because you had no key. And once you had the key, you could step through and see things that you were not able to see before because you were trying to do it educationally and trying to do it humanly and it won't work. That's not the combination. You know it's 32 to the right and 15 to the left and 46 to the right and it opens. Anything else don't open. You gotta have a combination. It's the same way, every time, the same combination. To the right, to the left, back to the right, click. Well, I think I can just spin it to the left, spin it to the left, and then look, nope, won't do it. All techniques work? I'm sorry, I wish that was true, it's not. Uh, BJ went through all that, he searched from the beginning. This technique, this technique, had his back broke five times. Five times his back was broke, fractured, because anything that was done, it was done to him first before it was allowed to be practiced on anybody else, any student, in the clinic, anywhere. So some of the crazies come forth. You know, in early days, B.J. was looking, searching, trying to understand. Five times his back was broke. And, uh, oh, I've got to have a shield, an x-ray shield, stuff like that. I don't want to lie. I don't like x-rays. I'm not going to x-ray my babies. I'm not going to x-ray my family because I don't like x-rays. Oh, they're so dangerous. You know who told you that lie? Medicine. Medicine said x-rays are bad. And you said, yeah, I know they are. Thank you, medicine, for telling me, buddy. And then we say, X-rays are bad. How do you know? Have you made an extensive study on that? Where is your study? Let me read it. Well, I just accepted the radiological aspects of the American Radiological Association. And, oh, you did, huh? Well, B.J. back was the first person to ever X-ray the human spine in 1910. Bought the first X-ray machine designed and brought right here to the Palmer campus when it was first discovered. And it was the first person to ever X-ray the entire human spine. Right here, our man, B.J. Palmer. Woo, woo, woo. Let me see. Now, he took, he and Lyle took hundreds of pictures and plates per day of patients there in the research clinic and they'd wind that thing up and I got one of them. Boom, and it x-rays. Now, what nobody didn't know is anybody that's passing up Brady Street got x-rayed. Uh, whether they wanted to or not. You see, they got x-rayed. If it's walking anywhere in the neighborhood of Brady Street, boom, everybody was x-rayed. Now, they took hundreds of plates per day, not knowing or understanding that there was any effect whatsoever to be uh, feared or concerned with. And neither one of those men had any cancer of any kind uh, when they died from radiation. And yet we've got all closed, compact, <clears throat> sealed machines and so forth, and we get in and go out of protections and everything else. And, uh, we're so scared. The tippy tell we want to go down the block to push the button before uh, we get anybody x-rayed. Say, oh, we don't want our, our old dad x-rayed. We don't want our little baby x-rayed. Well, let me tell you something. Let's say x-ray does cause some trouble. Maybe it does. Let's say it does. Okay, we've agreed it does. Maybe a little. Subluxation will cure you. I mean, that's a fact. So are you worried about a little x-ray that might harm you to find a subluxation that's going to kill you. So let's swap off the difference. Swap off the difference. It's no big deal. Okay. So let's quit that believing uh, medicine said this and medicine said that. So what they say? They, they're the same one that says you're no good. They're the same one that says your principle's no good. It won't work. There's nothing to it. They're the same guys. And they say, oh yeah, we ought to get off, everybody off drugs, especially women, because when they take drugs, it harms the baby, the fetus. Oh, have you made a study on that? Do you know that for sure? Well, no, that's what they said. But I'm a chiropractic wife. I'm a chiropractic sister. I'm a chiropractic female, and I believe that because my medical profession told me that. And I know they wouldn't tell me anything that wasn't true. 
Well, they just got through telling you chiropractic's no good. I mean, they told you that, didn't they? That's not true. But they told it to you. There's nothing to chiropractic. It's, it's just a forest. There's nothing to it. Well, let's look at this. Did the drug really do something to the fetus? Oh, yes. I can see it now, just exactly how it happened. I understand it thoroughly. You've been lied to again and bought it. What if we are going this approach? Uh, the drug entered the female and had toxicity to the blood, which went to the fetus, and the toxicity was an insult and subluxated the fetus, and because of the fetus being subluxated, uh, the fetus was harmed from subluxation, uh, not from the drug. What about that? What's wrong with that? See? Well, that's the way I'm going to go. See? I'm not believing everything they put out, every little statistic they put out, because you understand this? They studied the human body when they were subluxated, because I know they weren't adjusted. And then they wrote down all that garbage in those papers and then distributed them to the uh, journal, uh, New, uh, New England Journal of Medicine. And then they published it and it became fact. Uh, when all the time it was a lie because they were subluxated when they wrote it down. You see? So let's get with it. Are we too light? Or are we too heavy or what? I mean, I might not get this chance again. Probably won't. Who knows? So I want to share it with you now. Let's get with it. Let's get to taking this principle and spreading it through thought and walk and talk to our neighbors in our neighborhood. And don't be afraid to approach that. Well, my little baby has this. Uh, my little baby has this. Can you help it? Yes. 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 I tell my patients, y'all may not agree with this. I'm just sharing it with you. That's all right. 